<laughs> <laughs> like, I'm in the wilderness with these guys, Jerry. <laughs> like, just, just so you know, here's like a. Is he a, used to it now or is what? Uh, he? He's totally used to it. He's still like, sitting, aye, sitting at home just, biting his fingernails. The TV <laughs> are. <laughs> I must have been a bit sketchy about that first. At first, aye. He, he came with me quite a lot to start with, and he still does come a lot, like to different adventures and stuff if he's in, actually interested in it. But um, like when I went snow holing recently up in, um When you went what? Snow holing. What the so, hell is snow holing? I think that sounds incredible. Uh, aye. <laughs> you go out and you dig out, you, you walk for a couple of hours and then you dig out snow holes in the snow and you sleep in them overnight. Um, Whoa. Uh, so, but it was me and two big ex army survival dudes. Right. And I was like, right, I'll take my, I've got like a GPS tracker. And I was like, I'll just, they were great. Like they were so nice and all that. But I'm five feet and you know, you could just carry me and just throw me into a ditch somewhere. <laughs> and there'd be nothing. Just thing. bury you in the snow. <laughs> so, uh, so I, there's a lot of Jerry just being like, right, just in case you end up in an acid bath somewhere, send me the address. <laughs> Jeez, so that is absolute uh, madness. I have never heard of snow holing of you. Never. It's no. Great. It's fab. Try it. So did you snow hole for two days solid? No, um, I was only meant to be doing it overnight, but we couldn't even do it overnight. We had to just dig emergency shelters and um, and then get back to the bothy because the weather was too bad. Oh really? So there's no art. Like, uh, it's not like an igloo. It's just basically a hole. Well, it, it, it. no, it's a proper like they they dig out you dig out slabs and all that stuff and you slab it all and you know you take four or five hours to actually make these things and then once you're in them, it's really warm and you know you can sustain life in them I, for I see igloos have always well fascinated me just because of that like I remember as a wee guy I just couldn't compute mm-hmm. what was happening with igloos <laughs> I still can't well, but, snow, uh, snow can only get to a certain temperature snow can only get as low as, as snow gets I don't know zero maybe I don't know um, don't put that in the podcast <laughs> snow can only get to that's a what it's called temperature. snow gets so, to zero <laughs> so <laughs> bye Paula <laughs> Please don't. This is a scientist all coming. I think you'll find. I don't know. Paula is talking shit. <laughs> but it probably why, is something like that. Yeah, but that's why. Um, so the wind and stuff can't make it any colder than, than right, what okay. it is. So you can see. I suppose if it's like wind. minus 40 or something. Like that yeah, they snow can really apocalypse they can really recently. Lives, you know, they're, they're fab, but I just done it for laugh. There we go. Eglus save lives. Save life. That's a good, that's a better name. <laughs> <laughs> that, please, don't, please don't put any of that shit. <laughs> is that, is that this is definitely all going in. Is that the one name in this podcast? Igloos, yeah, Igloos, Igloos save, save life. life. Okay. Um, but I, Paula, first and foremost, thanks for coming on. No bother at all. Thanks for having me. Craig yeah. was a man that got you here. So. Yeah, I should, I should probably give a, a wee shout out to my pal Jennifer who, who put us both in touch. Yep. Hi Jennifer. Um, so yeah. Um, thank you very much for coming through not at all and uh, your stories are incredible but I guess best place to start is the beginning mm-hmm. um, how did this all affect uh, who are you who am I oh <laughs> god that's, that's a big existential question <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be asked that um, so I'm Paula and I'm, I'm kind of known now as Paula Must Try Harder quite a lot because that's kind of a, my adventurer name. My my blog was Paula Must Try Harder and, and it kind of just stuck. And that was basically, it was eight years ago now and that was my way of trying to fight my way back into the world. Um, I have a really bad history of of mental ill health and this um, that you see now is a very different person from what I was even just seven, eight years ago. So nowadays I am... A speaker, an author, a, a trier, um, yep. the the least likely adventurer in the world. Um, but before this, I could barely leave my house. So, wow. um, so it's a big a big turnaround. So it's, it is quite a big question: Who are you? Yeah, because, it's, it's, yeah it's vague. <laughs> yeah, no, because I, I have two very different kind of sections of of my life that that I see, and um, I'm very much. A different and, and kind of new person now than than if I'd met you. I mean, I wouldn't have met you eight years That's ago right because you'd have had to come to my house. Yeah. <laughs> um, can we can we go back there? Uh, sure. It's obviously a, a very kind of serious question, but if you don't mind, mm-hmm. what what took you to the space where presumably you wouldn't leave the house or yeah. talk us talk us through that. Um. Obviously, it didn't happen overnight. Obviously, um, I didn't just wake up one morning and. I'm not going to leave the house anymore. It was 
25 years of anxiety, um, depression, panic attacks, mm. you know, it kind of it all came together for me. Um, so it's not a great cocktail. <laughs> no, it's really not. I kind of, I kind of got all of them, all, all of the the mental health conditions um, at different at different levels and at different yeah. times. So I remember being anxious when I was maybe four or five, and that was right. so, so quite God, really quite crazy. really quite young. Um, and that was in the eighties, and childhood anxiety was not a thing in the eighties, especially not in the East End yeah. of Glasgow. You know, if yeah, if it wasn't a broken bone, you could just go up and get get to school. So <laughs> I deal with it. <laughs> so by the time I was a teenager, um, I was already I had loads of twitches, so I still twitch quite a lot. You know, I've got I blink a lot, um, my face contorts and things like that. Right. Not as much now as it did, but when you're fourteen and fifteen and you're terrified of everything and your face is going mental without you being able to have any say in what it's doing. <laughs> you can imagine what, Jeez, yeah. what So that was right bad was when like. you were that young? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was seeing lots of specialists and things. They, uh, the doctor sent me to like ear, nose and throat and all that stuff because he just had no clue what was going I, on with me. No idea what was happening. Um, and my folks were, were brilliant, but I had no idea how to deal with, you know, none of them had anxiety or anything yeah. like that. So, so by the time I'd got to, you know, my 20s and, last, and 30 eventually... I was rattling with medication. I had seen all the specialists, everybody that I possibly could have seen to um, to try and get get me out of it because I was still at that point waiting for the cure. I was waiting for not the band. I was waiting for <laughs> somebody to say, you know, this is this take is this. It, I- do this and then you're sorted you'll be sorted you know just plant your feet in mud yep. for fi- I'd have done anything um, and it wasn't coming like there was because you can't cure anxiety and I'd yeah. still you know I'm still terrified all the time I'm still I still have anxiety I still have depression and panic and I just am a lot stronger now so have you got a method I kind of if you feel mm. an episode of anxiety or a panic attack come on do you now have like a a methodology of what you would do to kind of say right and or yeah. you can identify it and you can absolutely. take steps to absolutely to it. it's it's all about you know I had coping mechanisms when back in the day but they were really unhealthy coping mechanisms right. so I would take more painkillers right. um, I would it's probably a very very common one yeah I would Definitely. cut out things that would scare me so if you know there was a wedding coming up or whatever I would just not go to it so that was my coping mechanism. Eventually I'd started that I was cutting out absolutely everything because everything right. potentially scared me. Yeah. So so I had coping mechanisms <clears throat> back then, but they were just really, really unhealthy. Now I have um, really good, strong coping mechanisms in that I can see when things are starting to spiral for me. So I can really spot that quite easily now right. um, when my mind's starting to take over and try, and try to derail things. Um, I do really really practical things like I'll get myself out for a run, I'll go swimming, I'll um, connect with the world if mm. I can. So I'll, I'll go out, <laughs> you'll sometimes see me walking around the park touching trees and things and I look, <laughs> I look mental, I am mental, but just getting myself out of my head and into the world again and reminding myself that I'm connected to things is so powerful for me and just getting myself back into the world again and reminding myself that, right, it's not going to kill you. This panic attack is not going to, you know, you're not going to stop breathing. It's fine. Um, so just wee things like that, really. And things like, you know, um, wearing my triathlon medal to remind myself that, you know, <coughs> what, you've done. what I've achieved. And that's what I always tell people when I when I talk to young people and things, you know, take mementos of things that, don't steal, but take mementos of things that, that mean a lot to you and mm-hmm. that you've, you've succeeded at because the next time that, you're struggling it's really powerful just to feel the weight of that and think right well I did that last time so maybe I'm having a bit of a tough time just now but it's temporary and I'll get back to yeah. um, back on track soon so yeah. we things like that are, are is really there a powerful. time is there a time you can look back to when you, you can identify now that that was your lowest point hmm. is there a time you can say that was when I was at my absolute lowest and yeah there are, there are a few um, when I turned 30 it was was really a low point. Um, I was getting to that stage that all the 
everyone that I was seeing, all the doctors and counsellors and things were saying, you know, there's not really much else we can try. You've been working on this since you were a kid. Well, the last thing you want to hear. <laughs> you know, in a yeah. nice way, you know, we can yeah. start at the beginning, we can do the talking therapy game, we can do whatever, but maybe, maybe this is, maybe this is as strong as you get. Maybe this is, um, it's hard. and for me, you know, that's incredibly worrying. Well, yeah, well, isn't it? yeah. And, and I wouldn't blame anyone for, you know, they weren't saying it to try and, bring me down or to try and it was just we were getting to a point that it's kind of getting well, nowhere yeah, yeah. It, we, were, we were going nowhere and I was on a really bad path at that point I was taking upwards of 30 pills a day just self-medicating to get me all just over the counter chemist stuff mm-hmm. to get me through the next five minutes to get me I'll get this will get me through the next five minutes yeah um, <clears throat> and something was going to give you know I was I was on a path to, to complete self-destruction. Total destruction, yeah. Um, so that was a really... But I also had a, a complete breakdown when I was early 20s. And for about a week, maybe, I couldn't be left on my own. I, I had to leave the toilet door open. Um, I had to sleep in my mum's bed. You know, I, I was just I was just a wreck. And I don't know what... I don't know what happened. I think just everything just caved in on me and for about a week and then one morning I woke up and and I was all right you know I'd, I'd got through it and um things still weren't great but um but I could I could keep going and yep. then as I say when I got when I got to 30 it was just like right there's I wanted to be changing the world when I was 30 you know mm. that way I wanted to be yeah. doing things for people I wanted to be really making a difference and um there I was I couldn't really even leave my house so, for me, that was a, a big Funny catalyst. That. I think there is there is such a massive pressure just saying you wanted to change the world. Mm. You do. Everybody does. Like yeah. you see your heroes or whatever, and like social media is obviously kind of wild for it. And that's well, you everybody's got their best version and stuff. Absolutely. But you do have like a total pressure, and ages like for for me certainly like when I got to thirty, I was like, fuck. I, totally should not be where I am like, <laughs> yeah. and, and it does it can send you like somewhere pretty horrible mm-hmm. but um, when I went to ask you so see when, see when you were going through going back to your 20s here mm-hmm. sorry um, when you kind of just kind of closed the world out did, did you have like a good friend base of that like the day the day like yeah I had friends who had grown through it with me so we'd never really discussed what I was struggling with, because um, for the most part it was social anxiety, so mm-hmm. I was really, really terrified of people and people's yeah. judgment and all that, all that stuff, just on a massive, massive scale. So I had friends that kind of I knew that I didn't like doing certain things, and um, but we'd never openly spoken about the fact that I was on a lot of medication or that um, these things really really affected me so badly I never really openly spoke about my twitches although they knew and you know I was tortured for it in school so obviously they knew Um, but we never really had that much of a conversation about it they just helped me to deal with it my family were always fantastic um, but they didn't you know they didn't know what I was going through so we, we didn't really we didn't really have that many discussions about it it was just like right get let's let's get through it let's um, let's survive yeah. it and that's what I was doing for a long time was just surviving it um I met my husband when I was 20 27-ish right. um, and he really quickly fell into that just really easily fell into that role of supporting me without yeah. ever me asking him to without that's ever good. Yeah, so I was That's really, really, really fortunate. Good to have that, yeah. Really sure. fortunate because he didn't, um, he doesn't have any mental health conditions. You know, he's never really had to deal with that. He just kind of knew how to how to support me. And then when I eventually decided, right, I'm going to try and kick this in the ash, let's. And he, he was just like, there was no trying to hold me back there was no like oh you sure it was just like fine let's do it you know let's and that's what I needed that's I, needed, I suppose you don't want him to baby you no um, um, because he says he always knew the person that I was I was always like that in the house with him mm-hmm. um, just I changed when I went outside and other people didn't really get to see that yeah. and he wanted me to to just be myself out 
with other people as well. And um, the world to see the way that he does. Exactly. So he was really fantastic and and never saying, "You sure?" You know, do you, because I think if I had had a chance, I think if somebody had said, "Are you sure about this?" I'd, I'd maybe went, <clears throat> "You know what? You know me better than I know me. You're Aye. right." If you're questioning this, yeah. Yep. That is a solid, solid husband. Sorry, what, what did you say his name was James? Jerry. Jerry. Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Jerry Maguire. <laughs> Show me the money, Jerry. He, uh, he only hears that like 14 times a day. So. Oh, well, 15. <laughs> there you go, son. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love that. Uh, good on you, yeah, Jerry. So nah, no, but that's, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, so, yeah, so I have... I have some amazing friends now that I have met through um, through this process. You know, lots of people that I've met who have really just stepped up and really helped me. And I've lost friends as well through this process, which I found really, really difficult because I thought that this was a really positive thing that I was doing and, you know, I was trying to build myself a new life. And mm-hmm. um, looking back now, I, I realised that I, I, I was a, a certain person in their life and that, and that was and that was great. And then I changed, you know, I changed into this different person that had these different, um, a different outlook and a different perspective. And and that was that relationship just just failed because of that. And I, oh, I really sad. really struggled with it. <clears throat> but no, you know, it, it's just life, isn't it? You know, Absolutely. they're it is, in your really life is, and yeah. then they're not. And um, and it's not through anyone's fault or, um, I just it, it's it feels kind of kind of sad that I've. I've lost that because they were a big part of old Paula's old Paula's yeah. life. I think that's it. I mean, we're probably at the age that um, you start to question that. You know, you've had all these powers for years and years and years, but mm. you realise that people had do move on, and you think I can cut these kind of negative, toxic yeah. relationships yeah. out of my life. Yeah, as much as you might feel um, some sort of bond with because you're blah I've known these history for so long, Aye, yeah. exactly yeah I think at times it is just you know? history and nostalgia that, that bonds people isn't there and then yeah. Um, yeah there are other people that are in your life for for different I'm trying not to say better reasons but um, but, but yeah, yeah and, and, and certainly in base yeah yeah I've lot, met a lot of people now that I would never have met had I not started doing all the sports and all the all the other nonsense and who have just been so incredible and as part of my recovery and, and hopefully always always will be around. Yeah. That's amazing. So Brilliant. one thing for for me and Haggy obviously kinda of talk about this, but one thing I kinda we wanted to achieve from this podcast is um not this very one, but depression we kinda of want to look at it in a way, no in a, a doom and gloomy way. because mm-hmm. uh, it is still a taboo like this. some people are like oh don't want to talk to him he's like depressing uh, the life out of me mm-hmm. so it'd be kind of good to just kind of get people on the side where they haven't ever had depression um, they find that very hard to deal with so for example like the reason I was asking about your, your friends like I, I know a few folks that have had really bad depression mm. some going through it the now I've been there myself where you do just completely shut your life away, you shut everybody away, yeah. you avoid social situations. I was certainly not on the same level that you you have by any stretch, but it gets harder and harder. And I, I, I don't really know what I'm trying to say. It's kind of, people are always the row saying, you need to be there if you've got a problem, speak mm. to me about it. But I don't know, is, is, there, is there a way or something that you would say to people on that fence, like so obviously Jerry's not really kind of come from that life. Mm-hmm. Is there any thing that you would say to them to maybe kind of come come at it and look at it from a different perspective? Or? I always my first my f- the first thing that I always say um, is is thanks to everyone who is trying to even in any small way trying to support somebody with a mental health condition because we can be bastards. Like, we yeah. should be so hard to support. And I'm saying that coming from a place of, I am one of us. So I know how hard I was at times to be around. Um, I didn't mean it. You know, we we don't mean to, to drain the life out of people, but it, it can really, yeah. it can really drain the life out of people. And um, so I always really make a point of saying, thank you so much, because without people supporting me, I wouldn't, 
sounds really dramatic, but I wouldn't be here. You know, I really, really wouldn't. Um, The only thing that I suggest to people who are supporting people with anxiety or depression is is always give them the option um, and continue to give them the option. So don't force your presence on them. Don't, um, you know, don't try and take them by, drag them by the hand out of the house. You can't, you know, you, you can't get them to that place as much as you love them, as much as you care about them, you can't get them to that place. All you can do is keep reminding them that they have the option to get there. You know, that, that they have, when everyone's going out and, you know, invite them. I know they might be a pain in the arse. I know that, you know, I'm certainly a pain in the arse when I'm in <laughs> one of my spirals. I am, you know, I'm terrible. <clears throat> but keep giving us the option because that that person that you love is still in there. Um they're just being swallowed up by something that's that feels bigger than them at the minute and mm-hmm, yeah. and there will be times when it's not bigger than them and I, I always try and remind people that there's more to them than a mental health condition because yeah. for years if you'd asked me who I was or what I was like or what my person had I just said anxious it's all I knew about myself Did you find it difficult to um, come out and for example when you met Jerry Mm-hmm. Did you find it difficult to sit down and, and go through everything and tell him and lay it out in the line? Mm-hmm. This is exactly how I am. This is exactly how I'm, I'm feeling or how I can be. Because I think that's a good point that you made actually. But I, th- I think that's a a very difficult pair, uh, a very difficult thing for someone who's going through it, depression or anxiety or something like that is actually uh, opening up to their even their closest friends mm-hmm. because you, it's almost like. You're scared in case that relationship changes because, like you said, mm. oh, yeah. hey, I don't want to hang about this guy. He's mm. just depressing. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to burden. You don't want to burden them. Yeah. I, I kind of just wanted to know, like, what what do you like? Like, so see when you're in that total mm. shithole, horrible rut, mm. what angle? There's there's no angle that that's best for your friends to come at you. Yeah. But what do you want? But you've, you've kind of answered that anyway, and just saying, just always be there, and just always yeah. invite just them out. Extend or whatever. the hand. I think yeah. it's just always, you know, my friends when I. My closest friends when I'm having a really... And I still do struggle at times, you know. It's not as prolonged and it's not as... Um, it doesn't affect me as deeply as it once did. But they know that I'll send them a message and I'll say, listen, I'm feeling a bit shitty. Um, I might not be great on the communication front for the next wee while because, you know, yourself, communication can be really stressful. And, and they'll say, fine, they'll send me a message every day, every two days, whatever, just saying, just checking in, you know, mm. love you, just, you know, I'm I'm here, don't need to respond to this if you don't feel yeah. like it. Yeah. And it's just that, That's it's just solid, it? easy, easy friendship. Like, I, some friendships are hard to keep hold of because it, there's always Aye. pressure to keep communicating and keep being there and keep... Um, be an easy friend to somebody. That's that's all we need is just... I guess that was my point. Um, mm. To the... Oh, it's a massive motorbike away by. Um, <laughs> so I can't go off in my <laughs> uh, Was there a time that that was extremely difficult for you to even tell your friends that... You know, for example, because mm. that's great, just going, listen, I'm not feeling good, I'm going to a really rough time here. But was there a time when you felt you couldn't tell your friends that? Absolutely. Even your closest one? Absolutely. How did you... Um, so? I didn't. How, I absolutely did not tell people right. and it, surpri- it always surprises me when somebody that I knew in the past says to me I had no idea because I thought that it was really obvious um, that I was an utter wreck you know a total basket case because mm. it's, it's literally written all over my face you know I, when I'm really nervous I st- like there's motions in my face that I just don't know how it does it you know it just goes wild yeah. so I thought everybody knew but there's still people that say to me I had no idea because Part of my social anxiety was that I wanted to always be normal. I wanted people to not think there was anything wrong. And the more I tried to hide it, the more nervous I I became about everything and the more buttoned down I became and the the less I wanted to speak because what if something slips out? that um, It just made it worse. So I didn't ever really sit down with Jerry and say and have that conversation. Mm -hmm. He just saw the change in me when we were alone as opposed to when we were among people. Plus, for <clears throat> a, the first year of our relationship, I think his friends didn't think that I existed <laughs> because right. it was like, oh, Paul is uh, working, or Paul is... <laughs> they were like, yeah, yeah, made up girlfriend, yeah, yeah. Jerry, uh-huh. <laughs> you sure? You sure? Half of them, I think, were turning up at the wedding. Yeah, like, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry's, Jerry's up the road for a wank again. <laughs> 
excuse you. Yeah, Forgive yeah. my French. Show me the money shot. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't. I didn't sit down and have that, that conversation right. with a lot of a lot of people, um, and a lot of them found out through me writing a blog and me, you know, opening up on the radio about it and me, um, you know, writing about it in a newspaper. That was when a lot of them were mm. like, "Ah, so that's what it was." You didn't just hate, you know, spend the time with us. You really, really struggled with right. that. And um, so, so sorry. See, the, was the blog your first kind of portal to? Paula must try harder. Is that kind of yeah? yeah. Right, talk through the expo. I really don't want to dwell too much. Into the, <laughs> I know, the it's dark a really heavy story. No, it's it's good. It's good to get there, but I, I want to really focus mm. on who you are now, yeah. like to show people that you've you've been in the pits and you've really kind of mm. come through. So it's, it's an amazing story. So I well, talked to us. About I always that. say that for you know thirty years, I I survived anxiety, and now I'm living with it because I live yeah. a really really healthy, really adventurous, really kind of out there life. Anxiety just comes with me, you know, and and that's fine. It's part of my condition. It's part of it's not part of who I am, but it's kind of part of what I am at times. Um, and I and I like to show people that you know you don't. It doesn't have to be doom and gloom having a mental health condition. And I try not to call it a mental health problem because a problem you know makes it sound like I should be trying to solve it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I don't need to try and solve it. It's just because you kind of can't as you've kind of shown. I can't. I just have to know that it's there and and just deal with it as it comes up so um so yeah the blog um was my first the first thing that I kind of tried so I started to just set myself random ridiculous challenges so my first thing was that I was going to try all 17 commonwealth sports before Glasgow 2014 so this was I like, it, I like how that's the first thing yeah. do you know what I mean well I tried all the, you know <laughs> baby I'd, steps I'd try, well I tried baby steps you know I tried going to the shop on my own and I'd had a panic attack and I'd ran, I'd ran back. I'd tried little things. This was me saying, do you know what? I need to try something big. I need to really test myself against this fear and see if I'm making it worse by thinking about it. You mm-hmm. know, if I'm making it worse by um, by not giving myself a chance to, to face it and see what happens. And, and it turns out that that was the best thing that I could have done. So the 17 sports, you know, there was things like, rugby sevens and wrestling and um, I had never tried a sport absolutely never right. I couldn't cycle I was terrified of water I couldn't swim triathlon was in there you know there was some really um, big scary stuff in there plus I had to go outside to do it and I started off by not telling people that I was doing it because of my mental health I started off just saying I'm really clumsy I've never tried any sport right. I think this will be a <coughs> laugh um, and people got involved but once I admitted on the blog that, you know, this is this is kind of to save my life. This is my last chance. Yeah. So um, you actually came out and said that? Yeah. After a particularly bad panic attack on a badminton court, uh, I put a photo up on the blog just of my big greeting face, just wailing my eyes out. And I said, you know, this is me. This is what I'm dealing with day to day. Um, and people just, got in touch and said I don't know you but this is great you know you're making it all right to just talk about this and just go out and and be shit at stuff and do it anyway you know and lots of people said I'm going to go out for a run I've not ran in 20 years but you know if you can be shit at this stuff I can go out and be shit at it as well that is is amazing right there that's so powerful so I am the low bar for people now it's like I'll never be as bad as Paula so so I can try it you must think about the amount of people that just needed that spokesperson exactly what you are just now just to kind of give them that wee push rather than looking at the the perfect world all the time yeah I think um, you can see all the elite athletes in the world and you can think well that's great that they've done that but it doesn't really connect to my world I go out and I am really bad at stuff and I don't care I don't give a damn I just go out and I you know I'm a human (laughs) catapult for a day and I I don't care if I get whiplash like it's just um, and I think that's a really powerful message is that you don't have to be the best at stuff you just have to be out there doing it Um, and it takes the pressure off people that's very true you know when did we when did we stop wanting to learn new stuff and just stick to all the stuff that we're good at you know it's a ridiculous thing to do we should be out there trying everything and that's kind of what I what I want to do in life I just I want to be the woman who has tried everything no suggestions please (laughs) (laughs) Because I can see those eyes. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you have a favourite Commonwealth? 
17 at the 17 I love I think I can was badminton by the sounds of it I can I can name you 10 I don't think I don't think I could either 17 Um, I loved lawn bowls lawn bowls was excellent I loved the triathlon Right. Um, the triathlon was a massive turning point for me. Right. Uh, I couldn't swim. Still, I tried really hard, but I was still terrified. And I just went with a big pink float, like in my swimming lessons. And I, <laughs> I did. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I was going to say, like, <laughs> that's quite dangerous to do. I can't swim, but fuck it, I'll get a try. Paula <laughs> died, but she, she died trying. <laughs> Paula did try hard. <laughs> Jeez, I, I just so. went with my big float <clears throat> and I kicked up and down the pool. Um, brilliant. Yeah, and then insane. yeah, went around the cycling. Insane good choice of words, are not it? Isn't it? And you know, we claim it like I'm mental, and it's I like it. Yeah. Um, fell off my bike a couple of times on the cycle. Yeah, and uh, crossed the finish line, and they gave me this medal. And I've now got a medal to say that I'm I'm a triathlete. And I couldn't oh, at that point, brilliant. you know, I still couldn't answer the phone. <laughs> I'm still terrified <laughs> answering the phone. I'm like, you can try athlete. You can answer the goddamn phone. So yeah, that for me was a massive turning point. So was that the, the, really? the Commonwealth doing the Commonwealth sports and stuff like that and doing the blog, was that was that the um, was that the start of this whole thing? Yeah. Was that when other other people like you know obviously doing talks now and stuff like that? Mm. Was that how this all really Absol- kicked off and snowballed? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it started with me, it was a really selfish thing, um, of me trying to save my mental health and, and my life, trying to make a new life for myself. And it kinda grew into something a lot bigger than me and nowadays I do a lot of um, schools talks and mental health workshops and things like that to um, to show people that there is there is a funny side of of mental health. There is a happy, joyful, adventurous, you know, wonderful side of this, and you don't have to suffer it. You yeah. you really don't. There are still days that are you know utter crap for me, but you know for the overall ninety percent of the time, I'm like this. You know, I'm yeah, I'm loving yeah. life and it, and it's great and. That for me is is what I'm here for now, and it's. Amazing. I always say that I'm really, really thankful for those thirty years. I'm really mm-hmm. grateful for having such a shit time of it for thirty years, because I can now stand from a, a position of of experience and authority yeah. and say, you can do this. You can. It's there's there's a way forward. Oh, absolutely. Um, and. I always say if I can help anyone in any way to do that, that's what I was put on this earth to do. For that's sure. that. In a weird way, it's kind of shaped your life, but from what it sounds like, your life is probably most important in the sense of showing others. Yeah, I listen, hope so. It's okay. It's absolutely it's okay right. to be. It's okay to be just what you are. Yeah. It's okay to just, you know, there's we've all got stuff going on, um, and mental health conditions are part of that. And yeah, they can just drown you and you know take over your entire personality and um, but there is a way forward and I will be there for anybody who I can be to to show them that there's a way forward and and to hold their hand in that if if they need it yeah I mean that's the best that's the best thing possible actually I think it's good nowadays especially for kids at school that are maybe going through this and suffering this that a lot of the these celebrities and high level athletes it's all coming out now that they are suffering from the same I'm not saying that's good that they're suffering from no. the same mm-hmm. people can see that it doesn't matter what level you're yeah. at or whatever you can, they, these people can still suffer with the just, same we're all just bumbling through and I wish Aye. somebody had told me that when I was like 14 and I thought that everyone else in the world had it sorted knew what they were doing they were all really confident nobody's got fucking clue what they're doing nobody yeah, knows really <laughs> no you know, born with a manual you know none of us have stuck to the path that we really, really intended to, you know, even those that are high flying, there's all, there's always some crap going on in the background. Nobody yeah. knows. We're all just bumbling through it. And I was so sure that everyone else was, everyone else's opinions were more important than mine and everyone else's um, thoughts were better than mine. And see, once you just realised, you know what, we're all just made of the same stuff and we're all just trying our it's best. That, it's that self-doubt. Once yeah. that self-doubt keeps in, sometimes it's extremely difficult to get rid of it, to Absolutely. get short of it. Yeah. Absolutely, that self-talk and um, the way that we speak to ourselves, you would never put up with anyone else speaking to you like it. Yep. And we drag that about, you know, 24-7, just constant talking down to ourselves and, and undermining ourselves. And if 
if I can get, particularly young people, if I can get young people to stop that and to just hear the way they talk to themselves and start to talk to themselves as a friend because you're, you, you should be your own best friend. You should be the one that, that is building you up, you know. Um, Imagine if you spoke to your friends the way you speak to yourself. You just, you wouldn't. <laughs> you wouldn't have pals. You wouldn't have pals. Yeah. You'd, you'd be a total loner <clears throat> because, you know, we let ourselves away with that and it's it, yeah. it can really um, be the start of recovery, just learning that you can talk to yourself in a different way and that you can think in a different way. Um, you can't, I can't cure anxiety. I haven't cured anxiety. What I have done is changed my response to it. Yeah. Um, and that for me was was how I fought my way back out and, mm-hmm. and is what has made, made the difference. Just trusting myself. I trusted everyone else's yeah. opinions on it. And I never said, Paula, what do you think? Do you think that you can do this? Um, and I'm, I wish I'd done it earlier but at the same time I'm thinking well I'm kind of glad that it took me so long because yeah. it means Aye. that I think that's kind of what makes it so special yeah, yeah. is your mammy still alive? Mm-hmm. just want to go back to something you'd said earlier on so obviously it must have been horrible sometimes you only, you only concentrate on the person that's suffering it must have been horrible mm-hmm. for your mum when you said you had to kind of sleep in the same bed as her yeah. every night and that she must be so chuffed now like yeah. Did, yeah. do you speak about it? Yeah, we speak about it in a kind of roundabout way. Um, we laugh a lot about the stuff that I used to do to just manage things. Um, the time that I used to take to do anything. Um, yeah, and my mum and dad are just the the proudest. When I always tell people when I crossed the finish line of the triathlon, my dad cried. Um, and it was just a lovely moment because, you know, he never really thought he'd see me outside or doing stuff or having Aye. a proper life that must have been brilliant. Um, and it was such a special moment and we still you know <laughs> I phone them in the morning and they'll be like right what are you doing today Paula and I'm like oh, I'm, I'm going to you know I'm going to snow hole or I'm going to uh, do some horse vaulting or I'm <laughs> wing walking the day to he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's like right okay be careful <laughs> I'll see you later Bye. and you know <laughs> it's just so random whereas before it had been like right are you going to get out today or are you um, mm. Are you going to manage to come round and see us today? Um, so yeah, they they just love that. My mum loves that I can take her out for coffee now, <laughs> and we don't need to stay in the house anymore. Um, yeah, excellent. Yeah, they're, they're just really. What's say uh, then? Really just just you mentioned a couple of activities there. Mm-hmm. Can you list some of the activities that you've already been done <gasps> oh, after goodness. this triathlon? Do you know yes, what I mean? some of the weirdest stuff. Some of the weirdest stuff. So wing walking was a big big one. Standing on top of a plane. Um, I did some, I've jumped out of a plane, but that's kind of normal. Um, yep. <laughs> done snow holing. I've been a human <laughs> catapult. Um, did horse vaulting. Did some gorilla knitting. I've, um, oh, what's gorilla knitting? What? <laughs> gorilla knitting. Is, is that making a jumper for a gorilla? <laughs> uh, I actually made jumpers for goalposts. So it's about um, knitting, for, <laughs> knitting for the landscape. And then you go out at night and you put it on like a lamppost or whatever. So that the next morning people see that there's, there's a jumper mm-hmm. or a so I, I knitted there was um local goalposts that were kind of abandoned and stuff and my mum and I knitted um for round them these big stripey stripey I'll send you a photo right. oh so right. we, we knitted jumpers for goalposts <coughs> um yeah Magic. I've done loads of just ridiculous stuff but it's really hard to re- hard to remember them because they're um what else have I done cave trampolining um wait what Cave that, trampolining. Did you, you meant to pause there and say cave? No, no, no. Trampolining. Cave, cave trampolining. You had done it. No. Um, <laughs> I've heard any of this. <laughs> done some surfing. Done some free diving. Tried to swim around Britain. Um, yeah, just loads of. That's amazing. So, how, do you, how do you get involved in this? It's not like you pick up a yellow pages and go. Eh, no, get all in it. Oh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was an astronaut for a day as well with the UK Space Agency. So, um, I've flown a plane. I'm qualified for nothing. Can I just point out? Qualified <laughs> for bugger all. <laughs> Went up and flown a plane with the, the Blades aeronautic, aer- aerobatic display team. So they're all X-ray arrows. Right. Went up, I flew loops in the plane. Um, I, honestly, qualified for absolutely bugger all. Pester power. I just ask people. I just ask that enough people. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Excellent. So it's kind of like, so I've always I've always been kind of annoyed by this phrase like Jack, Jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> There's fuck all wrong with that. It's like, Absolutely. I agree. Like, That's amazing. I, like, I spent a long time trying to, me and you, like, basically trying to be fucking rock stars, right? <laughs> and uh, so it was like such a high bar. 
didn't happen. While being depressed and anxious, and I might, I might have been admitting jumpers for the gorillas and also fucking doing lip lips. Um, I, still time. <laughs> I'm very much a believer in just going out and trying stuff. Um, does uh, does Jerry ever just think it's like, come on, Paul? I just want to sit in the house and watch a fucking film. Right? Absolutely. Give me Netflix and chill tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like, sometimes he's just like rolling his eyes, like, oh Jesus, Paul. You know, the day that I went life modelling um, for the life drawing class and life modelling that's nude modelling in, that in the buff. Uh huh. I, um, I don't think I could do that, man. But was, see, for somebody to come from such social anxiety, that is. Absolutely, like, it was blown my mind. It was terrifying. Aye, 100%. Um, there was, like, 20 artists and they're all running in a circle, so somebody's always getting the bad angle. You know, there's always <laughs> some, somebody drawing your arse at every point in the day. Yeah. Um, it was just one guy... I don't guy. even think I can be the guy doing the drawing. <laughs> I don't want... Uh, oh did, did you just see me looking at a bit? <laughs> <laughs> I've not drawn the boobs in, so it's fine. <laughs> I get right into detail though one guy brought like a proper life size canvas I'm not that tall so you know it's like a five feet canvas and he drew me life size you never need to see a life size version of yourself in the book it was yeah I couldn't look horrific. at that myself he's maybe still got it in your house just like that <laughs> <laughs> alright Paula oh god oh no I'm going to even this about that he lives in a cave in a tramp <laughs> It's all coming full circle, yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, so things oh, when we went paragliding and stuff like that, Jerry was just like, oh, well, can we, you know. So does Jerry do a lot of these things as well? He comes along to, some, somebody needs to take the photos, but sometimes um, they get them involved. So he, the day that I went to be an astronaut for a day down at, um, he, got, he got a shot <laughs> on the centrifuge machine oh, and he'd amazing. always wanted to be... He'd always wanted to do anything to do with space. So I think I earned my marriage that day. He was like, right, it's been worth it. <laughs> it's been worth all the shite well, to get to do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, he gets he gets to do some of the stuff. Um, and a lot of the stuff he's just like, there's no way I'm not doing that. You know, like the free diving. I was a mermaid for a day and stuff like that. And he's like, I'm not doing that. But he'll come and t- <laughs> take the I don't, I don't think Jerry would want to be a mermaid. <laughs> no, he wasn't, he wasn't really into that, surprisingly. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so what does that entail, being a mermaid for a day? Oh, it entails Until, wearing hey. a big mermaid tail and basically doing some free diving. So holding your breath and and diving with, with the mermaid tail on and getting some pretty pictures taken. Um, so where about did you do that? I was down in Cornwall at the time. It right, was still at the right. time when I was attempting to swim around, swim around Britain. Right. Um, I don't fancy doing that off air beach or anything like that. You know what I mean? No, Aye, <laughs> it's definitely no way I would imagine mermaids kick a bit. Um, but there are some syringes hanging out there. <laughs> Strathy Park, just in the in the middle of the lake. <laughs> oh, God, God. There are some professional mermaids who do it, like you know, go to kids parties and things like that professional like, mermaids yeah, and do like swimming that's pool wild isn't it mm-hmm. yep. um, so there's because it's hard to kind of maintain grace when you've got a big flipper on the back of you um, I was just an ugly mess doing it <laughs> but <laughs> but there are people that like perform it really well but, um, yep. but off yeah. the scale eh? yeah some, I've done some really weird things but I again I just intend to just keep doing this shit until somebody tells me that I have to stop because I need to go to a care home or something or, something. <laughs> <laughs> or my, my ability is no good enough anymore but <laughs> as long as people keep as long as it keeps helping other people to see that it's possible then I'm good to it. plus it means that I get to go into schools and show them really cool photos yeah, of you must have you know, me, some photo collection yeah me yeah. flying a plane and it engages them and then you go then you sneak in the mental health message you know you, you yep. can talk to them about mental health while they're looking at you you know yep. trying to put a fire out in a fire fighter's costume or being a police officer for a day they're engaged with that and you kind of just then get them talking about about mental health stuff so it's really, I mean, really, it's really positive it's inspiring do you know what I mean? Sitting here just talking about cave trampolining. I'll like, try that now. I'm definitely going to spend a bit of time on Google tonight. A hundred percent. But yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think I'll, it made me wonder what kids experience with us nowadays mm. and how it's changed for when we were at school. Because obviously it's changed. It's probably come full circle. Yeah. You know mm. what I mean? I, I don't know what they, they must go through. And um, that's probably the best thing that you can do yeah and it's it's, it's truly inspiring and I hope that the the kids do kind of take that and and don't have to suffer in silence like they must eh? if if even one young person hears a talk and says you know it's not all bleak you know there's there's hope then I've 
I've earned my existence. You know, I've earned every breath. If if somebody takes even just one positive thing away, there might be <coughs> two hundred people in that room that are thinking this is a lot of shit. You know, this doesn't relate to me at all. And if there's one wee guy or one wee wee woman in there that says, mm. Do you know what, I can maybe I can maybe fight on with this. I can maybe I can maybe get somewhere with this. I'm worth it. That's you know, the, matters, whole, yeah. the whole thing has been. It's worth the whiplash and the <laughs> <laughs> the nearly drowning as a mermaid. It's, it's <clears> worth <throat> it because what else do we have in life but to try and support each other? It's you know, and that's a massive part of my recovery as well. Is that I now I love getting to support people, and I can only do that for a position of recovery. So it keeps me strong. It keeps me yeah. healthy. That now I can see. Um, well, I need you know I need to be I need to be looking after myself. I need to be taking care of myself because then. Yeah. I have the um, the strength to go on and, and support other people. Um, helping others is one of the pillars of recovery, I think. Um, being able to get yourself to a point that you can be hopefully a good example of living well with mental health conditions um, is the best thing I think that I've, that I've ever been able to do. Uh, truly, truly is incredible. <clears throat> one thing that makes me quite happy as well is that the fact that schools are getting people like yourself. Yeah. Like I remember, I don't really remember many kind of guest folk coming to speak at our school, but me I remember when I means. moved here, people like Bewitched. <laughs> remember Bewitched? Remember Bewitched? <laughs> Bewitched were like performing and stuff. C'est la vie. C'est la vie. Bugs in the windshield, was that them or not? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I've no idea about that. No, it's well, not me neither, actually. <laughs> uh, you made that up. <laughs> I don't know. That, I was a, that, was a different, that was a different outfit. <laughs> Was it? With a tune, but... Um, it wasn't up. Bugs in the windshield, aye. Um, it's not be bitched, I've just remembered. <laughs> but, uh, aye, because if, lo- if you are looking at, like, if a footballer comes in, because I know that happens a lot, especially mm. around this neck of the woods, like, it's easy for them to be an idol. But, like you're saying, for you, if you're making a difference to just two, one, two people, yeah. like, for the people that are struggling for them to come in maybe see a footballer that there that might make them feel a bit shit mm-hmm. like I don't know like it's, it's it's probably so good that well it is so good that schools are kind of doing that that wasn't a thing certainly when I was growing no, up schools have really changed their their ways of, of working with, with young people on on mental health and well-being um, it's really it's really discouraging when you go in and there are so many young people that identify as, as having mental health problems because um it is, it is really prevalent in, in young people at the minute, but it's really encouraging to see the other side of it, that schools are really, really willing to to take advice and to try their best for for young people. When mm-hmm. I was at school, you know, my guidance teacher told me that I should just start, and I quote, um, stop trying to be different and start dressing and acting like everyone else and maybe I wouldn't get picked on as much. Aye. I remember, that, I remember stuff like that yeah, as well. That just that doesn't You're a fucking guidance teacher. That <laughs> no, just doesn't crazy. happen anymore. Yeah. You know, people, um, there is support and there is that message of companies because we're we're here to we're here to help you and you can talk to us. So that's really encouraging. But I always it must be so difficult to be. I don't know what the modern equivalent of a guide is, but um, it must be really difficult to be a, a guidance teacher these days because. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to support anybody with um, a mental health condition. It's really, really hard um, because it can feel really um, hopeless at times and like you're not making any difference. But to encourage anyone who's in that position, you are making a difference. You're making a massive difference just by opening up the conversation, just by giving somebody the space um, and the shoulder to to lean on. and. Yeah. It, it is what pulls people through. It really, really is what makes a difference. Even if at the time you feel like you're doing absolutely nothing just by being there, just yeah. by sitting under their blanket with them. Um, it's one of the best things that you can do for somebody. Brilliant. Amazing. You, you obviously made like the wildest <laughs> like jump. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> like what, what, what like you die totally. Like <laughs> what advice would you give Maybe not like run a triathlon, triathlon guys, mm. but like, what advice? What do you think it was that ignited you? I know it was kind of you said. Yeah. I had to kind of save myself, but give some advice so, um, to folks struggling. Maybe. <laughs> I would not say 
first port of call is, you know, clambering top of a plane and strap yourself to it and go, you know, wing walking. That's not my message at all. And, I, and I, um, I'm really careful to tell people that I'm not saying you have to go out and do adventures to to get over anxiety. It's it's not. For me, it was it was what that brought to me. It was um, it was that facing my fears and realizing that I that I had more strength in, in me than anyone had ever gave me credit for, including myself. It was that that made the difference. It wasn't it wasn't the doing the triathlon. It wasn't you know. Um, it was what it reminded me of of who I was, and I think yep. my 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 first advice is and always will be go and see somebody, go and talk to your doctor, get all the support that you can possibly get from outside to get you to a point that from the inside you can change how you feel about it. Because all that external help got me to a level playing field that meant that I could then take that leap myself. If you're not there, <laughs> you're you're not you're not taking that leap, mm-hmm. you know. So get all the support that you can possibly gather people around you. Never ever feel bad for asking for help or for taking help when it's offered, because even if that person doesn't really mean it, take it anyway. You know, take take as much support as you can get because you would use the crutch if you had a bad leg. You know, take it while you can get it <clears throat> yeah. because you might need it just to get you to that point that you are then able to see things from a bit of a different light and then and then just go for it because it's it has to come from you. And I find and it's really, really difficult for me to say that because there are people out there who will be just be like, that's a lot of shit. You know, I am never going to get to that point. Um it might take a long time. It might, and it's mm. and it's hard. It's always gonna. Work. It's a you, long You'd have probably thought that listening to yourself the night years and years ago. It is hard work. Like day to day, I have to battle it. Day to day, um, but it is so worth it. It is so worth it, and you are so worth it. You know, you're as a person, you have, and I'm talking to anybody. You've got so much to give to the world, <coughs> so much, and um, you're absolutely worth putting that work into yourself to get yourself to a point that. Um, that you can live because you can live you know you can absolutely I sound like an inspirational quote here I'm sorry um, just put <laughs> like a nice quite, I think it's <laughs> evident that you are put a nice, I'm like, happy for you to be scene that. or something behind me <laughs> <laughs> um, I will insert it be picked this thing <laughs> you know <clears throat> you can live a really good life with mental health conditions you, you absolutely can you just need to get to the point that you're ready and that's really hard for a lot of parents of young people who are struggling or spouses of people who are struggling or um, because you want naturally to to drag them to the point that you're at yeah. and you, yeah. you can't. There's no bridge in that gap. You just have to be the hand that's there for when they reach mm-hmm. out for it. That's true. I, mean, I, mean, I, must, I, I hope that, sorry, I, I hope that anyone that does watch this that can identify that, I hope they are truly inspired by what you say and if they want to go and do some of the crazy activities you've done then by all means go and do it but find I think everyone will find their own adventure do you mm-hmm. know what I mean I don't want it to sound cheesy but in the same it vein did, but it's true <laughs> in the same vein that's exactly why a part of me is doing this do you know what I mean mm-hmm. do you know because like, people watch this and they might go oh fucking this is shite or whatever do you know what I mean but you put yourself out there exactly I don't, I don't give a shit it's no. probably one of the first things in life that I've done mm-hmm. that I really don't give a fuck about what people think mm-hmm. and that's me out my comfort zone do you know what I mean yeah. and I, th- I hope people find their own thing yeah. that they can do which really encourages them to do more and uh, be less anxious or it's incredibly just, freeing isn't it when you realise that even if you screw it up it doesn't matter a damn you know it, the world does not cave in Aye. around your ear if you're a bit shite at something I'm shite at things absolutely every single day now like every day I go out and I try something and I am utterly crap at it and I love it I absolutely <laughs> love it because nothing bad happens you know what does me I mean surely skydiving's the exception to that <laughs> you can't even really shite at skydiving you probably can <laughs> really. I can't afford to have died from it <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad at a lot of stuff but like it doesn't matter as long Aye. as mm. I it gives you power back over it you know once you're like I don't care that's absolutely it's fine that I'm, and I tell people you know I go out and I'm like I'm probably going to be crap at this I don't mind. Um, it's really, really freeing to just go out and learn something and not try and 
not try and succeed, not try and be brilliant, not try and win. Just go out and do it because you want to. It's just the best thing in life. And I don't know why kids do it. You know, we always say to kids, you know, going out and try this. You might be really good at it. You might, or you might just enjoy it. At some point we just stop and we're like, I'll just stick to this because I'm good at it. I'll just stick here Mm because I'm, oh, I'm good at maths. I'll just do maths for the rest of my life. Fuck that. You know, go and do something that you're crap at. Fuck maths. (laughs) Fuck maths, guys. Let's just end it there, mate. Should you have big maths? Fuck maths. (laughs) You know, like, you don't say to a kid, you know, you're really good at crawling, you should just keep crawling forever. You're like, right, you've mastered that, get up and get on with something else. Yeah. Yeah. Why are why are we not getting up and getting on with something else? Um, it's what we're here yeah, for. It is true, because we, we, we do live in a society where you just kind of throw all your eggs into one basket, yeah? Mm-hmm. Right, like, absolutely. Teenagers are taught, like, oh, you're, you're, you're quite good at science, you should go and do science at uni and then science all the rest of your life and then science forever. Fuck science. Fuck no. science. <laughs> I'm, at some point, I'm going to hit on something that one of you is actually like. Fuck science. Fuck I'm science. a scientist. <laughs> you know, but what about your passion? What about yeah. doing something that brings you energy or that, you know, that you really, really... Who gives a damn if you're crap at it? Go out and do it anyway. You'll improve. You know, you'll... Or you won't. Who cares? I'm still <laughs> shite at riding my bike. I still fall off all the time. Nothing better than like flying down a hill and falling off at the bottom. I don't care. We <laughs> granny's laughing at you. I don't like it's brilliant fun. When do we stop? When do we stop embracing that? And we shouldn't. And that's my mission is just to get people to go out and do stuff just for the hell of it, for no other reason than that that they want to. I think we should start doing that and we'll video it. We'll pick falling off bikes. <laughs> falling off bikes. <laughs> That, 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 that doesn't does sound funny to me. Falling off the rest of this, but I, I have a list of stuff that I can get you both involved, and you're more than welcome to come on any of my adventures with me. Oh, let's um, do it. I think yeah, we let's should do do, take that on as a challenge. Yeah, let's and, do uh, one while well, picketing. It's like, I'm not doing mass. the life modelling. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm never doing that again. <laughs> don't worry about that. that is a one-off. Oh, I've got the photos to prove it, and that's all I need. Right? <laughs> and do you know that photo? I have shown that photo absolutely everywhere. I even got to sco- show that photo in the Scottish Parliament, and I was so proud. Like standing, that right? at, standing at the bottom of the stairs with my massive arse just on this big <laughs> screen. I was like, "This is this is what life is about." So you've been in the Scottish Parliament. That's. That is pretty cool as well. Yeah, um, I've spoken in the Scottish Parliament and um, it still baffles me that people let me do this stuff. Um, I feel like I'm going to wake up one morning and they're going to be like, right, come on, you're kidding on. <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> you're, you're no good. <laughs> like, what, what are you playing at? We've done a test, she's the happiest person ever now. <laughs> but you know, like, as long as people keep asking me to do it or keep letting me turn up and go diving a go or go caving a go, then I'm I'm there. Quite right. Absolutely. Listen, this is this has been well good. Um, <laughs> can can we just go actually? So for folks that listen, if anybody's got this far, right? See if you've turned it well off. Well done, idiot. But uh, <laughs> fuck maths, fuck maths, <laughs> <laughs> and science apparently. Uh, and science for sure. Uh, but yeah, just just basically tell them. Are you still doing your blog? Yeah, the the blog's still up. Um, Paula must try harder. Co. Right. Um, just Google Paula must try harder, and you'll basically find all my. Because no other bastard's called Paula Must, must Try Harder. Because it's a crap name. <laughs> Paula Must Try Aflon Harder. <laughs> yeah, so, I had to stick a wee pun in there. So yeah, it's <laughs> that's where I that's where you'll find me on like all social media cool. and stuff. And Magic. it's not just lip service when I say get in touch if I can support you in anything. You know, if it's just getting you to go to the shops or you know coming for a cup of tea with you or say I send there's people that email me once a month I just check in with them never met them just check in with them and I say how you doing this month you know everything all right can I because sometimes you just need somebody to vent to or somebody I am your I am your vent I am your shoulder get in touch because it's what makes that 30 years worthwhile for me amazing brilliant everybody needs a Jenny Everybody does Listen, see if everybody could get a Jerry, we'd be in a good place <laughs> by the sounds of it. Yeah, I like the sounds of Jerry. Uh, He's a good guy. He's tell, good guy. tell him hi. I will um, do. I will do. I'll get him to. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> um, but listen, thanks for finding whatever it was that made you do this. Um, it's what an amazing story. Thank what an amazing 
time I've had just chatting and it's finding out about you. Unbelievable. It's awesome. I just, I use all my words now. Like I didn't speak to anybody for 30 years and now I just talk. So I'm so sorry if your ears are hurting. We might just... No, not leather. at all. I want you to come back and tell us about the next series of adventures yeah. we've completed I would them. 100% love that, aye. Thank you so much. To be honest, we could go in for another few hours, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, not, we'll not do that. We'll cap it here. Um, <gasps> but sure, thanks for coming on. No, thank and you. Thanks for the tea. Thank you. I'm still drinking this. Now we can start playing with Churro again. Yeah, I will bring you out. Magic. Thanks, guys. Cheers, guys. Fuck science.